you know, you don't actually have to plant out your whole garden at the same time. We can do it in stages and have succession planting going. And that it way, it gives you more food through the seasons and doesn't overwhelm you at the beginning. I'll show you what we planted earliest and kind of walk you through the sections of the bed that we planted in order and where we're going to be planting in the future. And if you really want the full detailed tour, we will be putting the less edited version up on my Buy Me A Coffee membership page. If you're wanting to support us or want more information on that, I'll put a link in the pinned comment below. In this first bed, we started seeds in the very late winter, actually last week of February in Michigan. That was a little early. It took a while for them to germinate because they had to wait for it to get warm, but we did start some cold hardy seeds. So on this end of the bed, we have our original arugula, which went to seed, is flowering, and is starting to form seed pods here. We do have a few weeds. This is lamb lamb's quarter, which you can eat. It's actually a perfect stage to eat that now, or you can mulch the paths with it. I restarted some spinach here. Has some in soil blocks that, that I transplanted out here because the spinach they tried to start did not. Since not a lot of stuff took in the middle of this bed, we did add some tomatillos from soil blocks. Something is eating these, but I think they'll survive and they'll keep going. We have over here a little bit of mustard greens. That one is a mustard green. I I added some Swiss chard from soil block. We do have a lot of milkweed in our garden. That's fine, we leave that there. So we work around the weeds that we want and we pull the weeds that we don't like. Over here, I wasn't sure if any of our lettuce started, but look, we do have a red butterhead lettuce here. I might, let's see here. This actually might be a turnip starting. One issue we had is we've been, it's Michigan, we go back and forth between being quite cold and then too hot. So some of this stuff, even though it started and growing, it got too hot for them and too dry for them too fast. We had a lot of Napa cabbage that decided to bolt with our heat. So I need to actually pull this net up. We'll leave those flowers for a little bit and let the pollinators do their work. Our lavender is just starting to flower. Over here is more cabbage. This is cauliflower. Cauliflower seems to be doing all right. We have some evening primrose here. This was supposed to be our broccoli. We didn't ever get big heads. It got too hot for them and they just went to flower. So the nice thing about the brassica family with cabbage and cauliflower and broccoli and Brussels sprouts, you can actually do planting in the early spring or summer harvest. And then you can also do a second sowing and planting in the summer for a fall harvest. So we'll probably do that. This section did have a big pile of chicken compost. We did clear that compost and put it on each of our beds over here. One, two, three, and then four beds got compost. And then the bed here and the bed along the other side of those trellises got compost. And then we ran out of compost. So um, after that, we we're pretty much flat here. We decided to put more potatoes in the ground. So we did that in May. Before that, we had some more brassicas that we planted in this bed. However, this bed is also full of milkweeds and evening primrose right here. We might have to open up this end of the bed so the butterflies can get to it, although I do have quite a bit of milkweed outside there too. We did plant kale through this whole bed. This, I should say, is technically the first bed we planted because we put this garlic in last fall, of course. And I did end up putting lettuces in here, but it got so darn hot and dry that almost all my lettuces have burned out. You can see a little one here, but they are definitely not taking off like they normally do. That pretty much takes us through our May plantings. February, March, April, May would have been those four beds and a lot of starting seeds inside. Oh, there is one more bed I started in May. Okay, behind me with these trellises, I started these beds by putting flower bags down first and then I put the compost on top. I also put those flower bags down in the pathway to suppress some of the grasses and then wood chips in the pathway. So that's a continuous process. On this side, we have two rows there and here of radishes and carrots. Now the radishes are doing pretty well. They actually need to start coming out here before they bolt. And the carrots have not been great, had great success with carrots, but again, it got so dry. Some carrots started, but really not that much germinated. On the fencing, I put peas. Well, there's one, there's one, but look, they're nibbled. We have a resident rabbit who seems to be taking the tops off our peas. This side here and over outside there, 
We did the same thing with carrots, but instead of radishes, we did beets. But these should do all right. And again, you can see an occasional carrot starting really not much along those lines got going. I continued that same process down this line. So in May and June, I started putting some more root vegetables. Along here, we did some turnips, I believe, and then rutabaga. And then later I put some summer squash plants in our gaps. We got some melons and beans. I have like every other one, a melon or bean to grow up this trellis here. We got a lot of bush beans and watermelon on this last trellis. And again, another summer squash here. So definitely planted out for these beds. Over there, around here, I put okra. And then there's the watermelons that should grow up the trellis there. Same thing, beans and melon over there. So this is a cherry pepper that survived our first frost because it was protected by a tomato plant. So we just took it out of the ground, put it in a pot, brought it inside. That pepper plant was last year's planting. The rest of these pepper plants in here are ones I started this year, but I might save more and pot them for the overwintering. Over at this end, we have our sweets. And then we get into some of our pimentos and shishitos and pablanos over on this end. We'll probably add some herbs around them. I'll broad fork this section because it's been a while since it's been loosened up, then plant into it. And now the jungle. Okay, so we definitely have a lot of grasses we got to take care of over here and wood chip piles that we need to spread. I don't think I've ever put wood chips over here, so we're going to work on that. This is Bella's bed. <laughs> it's a little bit wild, but her arugula did the same thing. It took, took a while, but then it bolted. So we didn't really get a lot harvested from it. We got a couple nice sized turnip plants that was planted early, early spring, February and so was the arugula. Her spinach did not do much. I think there's one spinach plant right over there. Radishes, nada. I have since added some tomato plants, tomatillo plants, and ground cherries. The peas in her garden have been nibbled on. So I did add a couple spare watermelons to this trellis. She has some, I think it's honeydew melons on that side. Over here, has some more spare tomatoes, so I put them in this bed. I have not done anything to this bed. I just pulled the weeds where I put the tomatoes. And yes, these daisies are not planted, they are wild. We have oxide daisies in our area. I think these are oxide daisies and they come up in little bunches like that. Over here, this is our asparagus bed. With asparagus, I decided to plant some arugula. And we also did two rows of mustard greens. This row is obviously doing a lot better than that row. But this row is getting invaded by the Jerusalem artichokes that started outside the fence line. Anyone planning on planting Jerusalem artichokes, I do highly recommend them, but don't put them near your garden because they spread by their root system. Like potatoes, if you don't get all the roots, you're gonna get more plants coming up. <sighs> we now have some in our asparagus bed. So this bed, other than a few melons we put on the bottom of the trellis, you can see I chopped and dropped the weeds to help. I chopped and dropped them just to hold some moisture in but I'm not going to actually broad fork or anything here. As I plan out this bed, I will just chop and drop whatever's growing there. Most of it is stuff that we planted last fall to overwinter. And we'll also do that with that bed where the tomatoes are. I will plant that as the season progresses. I'm gonna let what's there stay there for now to keep that soil texture loose and then we'll drop it as we need. Do have some plans for the perimeter. I do wanna create a wood chip path, but along the perimeter, I want more perennials. There is my, I guess, almost two thirds planted garden. Let me know what you do in your garden, where you're at, and do you plant the whole thing out in the spring or do you plan to plant some things a little later? I'd love to see your comments below on your approaches and we will see you with the next video. By the way, that's a potato growing out of our compost. Look how huge that is.